This video is brought to you by IT Pro TV. If you'd like to learn more, visit us at itpro.tv. All right, so let's say the redundancy is what I want. All right, well, dynamic disks do support redundancy. There's two forms of redundancy we can do, which is mirroring and RAID 5. Now, the recommendation is not to use RAID 5. Uh, not that RAID 5 is bad. It's just that Microsoft is slowly killing support for it, right? So you used to be able to do RAID 5 in like uh, Windows XP and Windows 7, Windows 8. Uh, but they've removed that. Actually, I think they removed it with Windows 7. Uh, so you even still see the menu items, but it's grayed out. You can't choose it. On the server, you still have that RAID 5 support. But again, hardware RAID controllers are so inexpensive that you really want to do it that way. Do it with art. Because even, even the cheapest, crappiest RAID controller that's out there is still going to do a better job performance-wise than, than your general purpose processor is, your, your CPU. So, you know, you want that hardware, right? But just to see how to create it, it's really not a difficult thing to do. We can choose to create a new striped volume or a new RAID 5 volume. They're both striped, right? They both break our data up and spread it across the disks. The difference is with RAID 5, we get redundancy. It creates a parity bit. And if you're not familiar with the RAID levels, we did a whole episode on it over on the A Plus show. Just jump on over there and, and watch it. It's part of your subscription. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't cost you anything extra. Uh, and you can see all about them. But basically, RAID 5 gives us an extra little bit that it uses. It takes up some storage, but it makes it where we can lose an entire hard drive and we stay online. We don't lose any data. So we get a, a full disk of failure and we stay online. We can also do a mirror where we do two copies of our data. It's inefficient, but again, you can lose one disk and your other disk has that full copy. So you get redundancy with those. A striped volume does not get you any redundancy whatsoever. It spreads your data across the disk so you get performance gain. You get multiple hard drive heads moving and writing your data, but if one drive dies, you just lost all your data, kind of like a span volume, right? So we're really making a choice here. Striped volumes are when we need the highest performance and aren't worried about redundancy. Mirrored volumes are where we need the highest redundancy and aren't worried about performance. And RAID 5, that's that middle of the road. It's a good boost on performance and it gives us redundancy. And so that's where we'll normally go on a server. All right. Now, if I choose that to create the new RAID 5 volume, RAID 5 requires a minimum of three disks, which I fortunately have. And so I can come in here and I can add in those disks and I can tell it how big I want the partitions to be. Now, I'm just going to go 36 gigs so that I have a little room left on the drives. And I'll make this my E drive. And, uh, and so I'm going to call this my RAID 5 volume. All right. And uh, that last little box there was just confirming that I wanted to go dynamic. So I'll now have dynamic disks in place. And it's going to build one E drive spread across the three disks. And whenever I write data to the disk, the data will be broken up into stripes and written across the three disks. See how it says resyncing right there? It's synchronizing the disks so that now when we write, it'll spread across the three of them. As I write data to them, it has to do a mathematical calculation for parity, and that's where the performance hit comes in. Done in software, your CPU is doing all of that parity calculation, and it makes the disks a little slower, right? But we get redundancy in exchange for it. So uh, it's going to take a minute to set that one up. And uh, you, know, you can see it's only 8% through. It does what's called a scrub, where it, it makes sure that all three disks are, are set up and, and cleared, and that they're ready to have that parity written to them. And then it moves along. All right. While that's running, I left some empty space over here so I could set up like a mirror and, uh, and even a, a regular stripe. Let me, let me start with just a regular stripe. A stripe is just like RAID 5, but without the parity, so we don't get redundancy. So I'm just going to add that in here, and I'll do another 36 gig one. Now, I say 36 gig. It's going to be striped across three drives, so it'll actually end up being 100 and something gigs, right? Uh, whatever 36 times 3 is. All right, so there's my striped volume. And then a, a striped volume is technically uh, uh, RAID uh, 0, right? RAID 0 is what's called a striped volume. It's, it's striping without parity. RAID 5 is striping with parity. A mirror is RAID 1, and a mirror is where we just duplicate two disks. Now, see how fast that F drive formatted and is ready? 
my E drive is still synchronizing, right? And that's that parity in RAID 5, you know, it's creating that little performance hit. When we just stripe without parity, it's done, it's ready to rock, because there's no redundancy to worry about. And then I'll just round it off here by doing a mirror. I'll do a new mirror volume. A mirror needs two disks. It won't accept three disks, because a mirror just involves the original and its copy. And I'll flag these as 36 gigs also. All right. Or actually, if I wanted to, well, no, we'll leave it that way. I was going to say, if I wanted my sizes to all be equal across these things, I could manipulate the numbers, but I'm not going to. All right, so here's my mirrored volume. All right. Now, when it's all said and done, when everybody's healthy, I have an E, an F, and a G drive. The E is striped with parity. So if I lose a disk, the E drive will survive it. The F drive is striped without parity. So if I lose a disk, the F drive dies. And my G drive, which still doesn't have a letter, there it goes. My G drive, where if I lose one disk, it really any one of them, uh, it'll stay alive because there's two copies of the data. Right? So I'm, I'm set up where I can survive failures now. All right. If I browse on my computer here, I can see E, F, and G, and I name them so I could remember which one. They just look like normal disks. Your end users won't know the difference. It really just comes down to what we've set up. The striped drive will perform the fastest. When we write to that drive, it's now got three sets of hard drive heads writing data at the same time. And when we read data, it's got three sets of hard drive heads reading the data. So it's going to operate at three times the speed of a normal hard drive. RAID 5 also has three sets of hard drive heads, but with every write operation, it has to calculate parity. It has to do a mathematical operation. So its writes are going to be slower. But its reads, it'll have three heads reading data. But one of those heads will always be on top of parity, so you really only get the benefit of two of the heads. So its reads and writes will be better than a single drive, but worse than a striped uh, RAID 0 configuration. And then a mirror. Anytime we write to one drive, we have to write to the other one also. When we read, we just read from one disk. And so when you do a mirror, your performance is really about the same as when you have a single disk. It's not really any better or worse. It can be worse if both drives are on the same channel. But, uh, but if they're on their own, like if you've got serial ATA drives, if each one's on their own uh, port, then you know, you're not going to get any degradation there. All right. Now, if I take a disk offline, let's see if it'll let me do this here. So I've got my E, my F, and my G. If I take disk 2 and I throw it offline, right? So there it goes. Notice the E and the G drive say failed redundancy, OK? What does that mean? Well, the disks are still online. They're still up. They're healthy. But they've just got a failed member. I need to replace that disk and bring them online. The other drive, the striped one, though, see how it just says failed? It's failed outright. Let's, uh, let's bring that one back online again so they all go healthy. And it's going to take them just a moment to get healthy because they have to do regeneration. So you know, when a, when a drive fails and goes unhealthy, uh, when you put in a replacement, Windows has to go in and correct that. And so it should be doing it already. Why is it not doing it? Um, there we go. I, uh, I just had to right click on it and choose reactivate disk, and now it's resyncing. So let me give it a moment while it resyncs. And then what I'll do is I'll copy some data to these drives, and then we can recreate that failure and, and see what happens. The F drive just came back full on healthy because when the disk disappeared, it went offline. You couldn't, you couldn't put data on it, and so uh, there was no changes to synchronize or anything like that, so it recovered quickly. But if I had an actual drive failure, I would have lost this data. The F drive would just be gone and, and hosed. All right. So, uh, so we'll, we'll give that just a moment. It's resyncing. I can actually write data to it while it's syncing. That's always fun. Um, since the drives, you know, they don't actually go offline. Uh, you know, when, when you have a failure in a redundant array, the, the surviving members keep that drive alive, keep the data writing. So I can still access all three drives, even though a synchronization is happening right now. All right. Let me, uh, let me generate like a file or something to stick on here. I'll just create a text file.
All right, so I'm just going to create a, a file here with a bunch of junk data in it. Let's see how big I can get this file. <laughs> there are limits to how big you can get a text file, but this one should be a pretty decent size by the time I'm done. All right, so it's 4 megs. So I just created a, a 4 meg text file, and I'll just copy that, and I'm going to throw it on all three disks. So that was on the E drive, and I'll throw it. Oh, actually, I need to grab that whole folder. Well, it's not even big enough to register on the uh, used storage level there. There we go. So now I've got a little bit of data on all three of them. If I browse my computer and I go to the E drive, I've got data, and in there is my test file. And on the F drive, I've got data, and there's my test file. And on G drive, data, there's my test file, right? So what I can do now is I can go back here and, oh, the sync is almost done. So I just need to, to wait a little bit longer while it finishes syncing. Uh, the mirror, it's already at 90%. The RAID fiber is at 79%. So again, a mirror, it's just synchronizing two disks and making sure they're identical. The RAID 5 array, it's having to calculate parity. So you, again, you can see how it's going slow. Mm -hmm.